such a sad moment for humanity that the Hagoromo Chike actually broke. I'm so glad that I have 150 more pieces at home. Oh, goodness. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. Oh, no, no, not you, you are not mistaken. I'm doing differential equation stuff. I'm terribly sorry that we are just doing analytic number theory in the last time, but this channel for me personally is just a huge learning opportunity to learn new stuff for myself. And I'm presenting this newly learned stuff to you guys. And I'm basically just doing analytic number theories and integrals in my free time. So yeah, um, here goes, I just, simply want to provide you once in a while with different content. Okay, so we are going to talk about something really important. We were talking about exact differential equations last time, so we were doing this kind of abstract proof, okay? And today we want to talk about a situation where our differential equation up here is not exact. They are called inexact differential equations, okay? Um, remember what it meant for this differential equation to be exact? Well, if we had this differential equation with the condition that p differentiated partially with respect to y is equal to q partially differentiated with respect to x. This is what it meant for our differential equation to be exact. Now, what could it mean for this differential equation to be inexact? Well, if this right here doesn't hold, okay, it kind of makes sense, okay? But we can introduce something and we are going to talk about five major cases that you are going to encounter in your daily differential e equation life, you could say, okay? Five cases that have to do with the so-called integration factor. We are going to call this integration factor H, okay? And this H at the moment is with respect to x comma y, okay? And we are going to use this integration factor to turn this an exact differential equation into an exact differential equation. The meaning, we are going to combine our p and our q with this h, meaning we are going to multiply both sides with h. What does it mean for h? We don't want it to be equal to zero, okay? Otherwise you can't multiply by it. Then it follows. Okay, um, maybe you should uh, finish the sentence off if you really want to have a theorem. So with the is inexact if this right here is the case. Okay, we are going to multiply both sides, meaning we are going to have that h times p dx plus h times q dy is equal to zero. We want this differential equation to be exact. to be exact, okay? This is what we want to do, meaning we can kind of take this condition right here that we had in a normal case. So if you multiply a function of x and y together with a function of x and y, that's going to be a function with respect to x and y once again. So our new Lee acquired condition right here for this to be exact is exactly, <laughs> exact is exactly if, okay, del y, of h times p is the same as del x of h times q. But the cool thing is, we know how differentiation works and even in two dimensions, we still have our product rule right here, okay? Meaning differentiating the first part, then multiplying it with the other one and then adding the another part to the uh, second differential. Meaning that's equivalent to saying we are going to have, um, okay, let's start it off this way, h times del y p plus p times del y h is going to be equal to the same thing basically just with the differential and the q instead of the p. Okay, so we are going to have um, h times del x q plus q times del x h. I'm terribly sorry, it's a bit cramped right there. Okay, so this right here is, yeah, basically the integration factor and we made use of that before. So when solving first order linear homogeneous differential equations, second order ones, okay, we even basically introduced this when solving inhomogeneous differential equations, linear ones, okay? So this right here is a common, uh, a common trick. Uh, if you do differential equation stuff, you basically do proofs by construction. 
Okay, this is what the last proof was all about too. This was a really constructive proof. Constructive proof. So um, yeah, what are the main cases that you could encounter? Well, two really simple cases are when h is just h of x or when h is just h of y. Okay, now for, for the first case, let us consider h being just h of x. Now we have this formula right here. This makes it a bit easier. Okay, so meaning if we differentiate h with respect to y, this is going to vanish in the process. So on the left hand side, we are going to have h times del yp being equal to h times del xq plus, okay, and h of x differentiated with respect to x is just h prime. Let's, let's put it that way, okay? q times um, h prime. Now what we can do, we can use separation of variables. Um, we have done this before, take a look into my differential equation playlist. At first I would like to um, subtract this term on both sides and factor out the h, okay? That's something we can do. So we are going to have h times del yp minus del xq is thus nothing but q times h prime. And how can we solve such a simple differential equation? We have found formulas for this before. We are going to divide both sides by q under the condition that it's not equal to zero. We are going to divide both sides by h. By our condition up here, it's not equal to zero. That does work out, meaning we are going to be left with h prime over h it is nothing but del yp minus del xq over q. And how do we solve such a differential equation in the normal case? Well, we are going to integrate both sides with respect to the variable that we have here, x in this case. Meaning, that's a filthy looking chalkboard, I'm terribly sorry. We are going to get the integral of h prime over h dx. We know what this is going to evaluate to. You can introduce a proper substitution. Let um, u be equal to h, then h prime dx is going to be du, meaning overall we are going to get the natural log of h. Okay, that's for once in a while a nicely written natural log right here, plus some arbitrary constant c. You can add it on the other side, okay? I, I really don't care. It's nothing but the integral of this stuff that we, that we had right here del yp minus del xq over q dx. And yeah, like I said, you are going to get a constant of integration or you are going to make, um, for example, an x not down here, you are going to put it down here, making an initial value problem out of this. Let's add a little c right here. And yeah, how can we solve for h? Exponentiation on both sides using base e on both sides. Meaning, this implies that e to the natural log of h is nothing but h being equal to Hagoromo Chai. No! It, it broke! My life is over. I, I have to make a little cut after that. Why did it break? My life is over, mate. H is nothing but e to, oh, the, this freaking hurts. E to the integral of the y, p minus del x, q over q, dx plus c. We can use the exponential property to turn this into e snack element of the real numbers. E snack. We haven't used this in a while. And this right here is the general formula for our h. And you can do this stuff analogously for h being just h of y. That's the next thing. And if we do this change from x to y, all that's really going to change is that we are going to change the differential operators from del y to del x and we are going to interchange p with q right here and some x's with y's, okay? You are just going to change the index, okay? The, the variables in all cases. Meaning if we consider the case number two, h is nothing but h of y, our h can be expressed as nothing but e to the integral of del xq minus del yp over p in this case times e snack, e slange, e slange. Okay, those are two major cases, and we're going to deal with the next three in the second. Hagoromo <laughs> my dear friend, my boy. 
Oh, it hurt so much in my heart. Oh, that, I can't believe it. It died. Such a sad moment for humanity that the Hagoromo Chaik actually broke. I'm so glad that I have 150 more pieces at home. Oh, goodness. Okay, next case is h being h with respect to x times y and it doesn't matter if you consider x times y or y times x if you use real or, or complex variables right here okay they commute doesn't quite matter so what we are going to do we are going to call it a little bit differently okay just for simplification purposes we are going to say that this is just h of u where u is x times y obviously okay meaning if we consider the cases where we have del y for example of h of u well i hope you guys know how the leibniz rule works we are kind of going to expand this we are going to take the outer derivative so h of u with respect to u differentiated times u differentiated with respect to y this is going to leave us with an x right here y differentiated is just um one okay meaning we are going to get h prime times x in this case and the same spiel for the x derivative right here it's going to give us h prime times y and those two h primes are the same this just follows trivially from the leibniz um notation you could say not the leibniz rule from the leibniz notation i'm terribly sorry and now we can formulate once again um, what our equation has to look like for our newly acquired differential equation to be exact. Now we are going to get, okay, what did we have? We had h times del y p plus, okay, p times del y of h is nothing but h prime times x and now being equal to h times del xq plus q times h prime times y well and now it's just a matter of rearranging once again so what we do um, it really doesn't quite matter we can subtract this term on both sides and subtract this on both sides factor out the h and h prime respectively and just do the same spiel once again that we did before meaning i'm going to do it stepwise we are going to get that we have h prime times p x minus qy is nothing but h times we're going to subtract this so del x q minus del y p now dividing by this right here once again we can do this okay dividing by this one on both sides if it's not equal to zero and dividing by h is not equal to zero we had this before we are going to get okay um h prime over h i'm going to leave a bit of space is nothing but del x q minus del y p and that's why it said it doesn't matter what you subtract on which side because you can factor out negative one and just get the same thing once again okay it's just the same thing it's uh, completely equivalent p x minus q y and well this right here is with respect to u at the moment so why not integrate both sides with respect to u once again that's why I gave it a new name, just for simplification purposes. Um, it really depends on your function and which integral you are going to be left with. So leaving this as just u and leaving the x and y here is actually pretty okay, right? Um, it really doesn't quite matter in this context right here. And now we can go through the same process, meaning our general formula for h, we are going to get a natural log and then exponentiation on both sides, is nothing but e to the this chunk right here okay that's a lot of stuff to write up there in the exponent you can also write x or something del xq minus del yp over px minus qy du times e schlange e snack okay um this right here is the solution formula actually and yeah um this is quite easy I would say okay this is something you can do and now for the next two cases which are kind of similar once again to another oh! 
Oh, I made a very small sign mistake in the last video capture, but this annoyed me so much that I'm going to redo this part. So case number four is exactly the one where we have the quotient of x and y. Okay, h is nothing but h of x over y, for example. And if you have y over x, you are just going to replace all the y's by the x's and the p's by the q's. Okay, it's just how it's going to work out. Meaning we're going to give this a new name just for simplification purposes and for the integrating variable. Now, we are going to have the certain cases once again. So del x of h is going to be, well, once again, h prime by the Leibniz notation. And after that, this differentiated, this u differentiated with respect to x is going to leave us with 1 over y. It's as easy as it is. And now, same spiel for the y part, del y of h is nothing but h prime. Yet again, and differentiating this with respect to y is a bit harder. It's going to give us, um, okay, the x is going to stay how it is. You are going to get a negative sign because this is y to the negative 1th power and then over y squared. Cudio, we can plug all of this stuff in. Meaning, we are going to get, okay, let me see. We are going to get h times del y, p, and then plus p times del y h, meaning it's negative. Um, that's why I made a small sign mistake when bringing it to the other side. I, I've done goofed, okay, I've done goofed my boys and girls. h prime, x over y squared is thus nothing but h times del x, q, and then positive q times this right here. Not o, it's q, 1 over y. Now, how can we continue? Well, once again, we're going to bring stuff to the other side. Okay, that's the only step I'm going to do now. That's equivalent to saying, um, let's bring this to the other side just to keep the positive sign right here. h prime times Okay, we are going to get, it really doesn't quite matter. It's going to be p times x over y squared plus q times 1 over y stars, nothing but h times. We are going to get uh, this to the other side is del y p minus del x q. And once again, dividing both sides by stuff under the condition that's not equal to zero, then um, integrating exponentiation is the same process once again. I'm going to spare you this process right here. Just take a piece of paper to write out for yourself as always. H is thus going to be e to the integral something. What's the integral something? Del y p minus del x q over this chunk right here. This is going to give us p times x over y squared plus q times 1 over y, integrated with respect to u, times i schneck, okay? i slange is schneck. We can do some more simplifications, okay? For example, if you take a look here, why not factor out the 1 over y squared on both terms, okay? Meaning that's the same as y over y squared. If you factor out the 1 over y squared, we can take the reciprocal, bring it up to the top, leaving us with a final formula. It just looks a bit better. Okay, e to the, we're going to get y squared del yp minus del xq over, and then this is um, xp <laughs> plus yq du e snack. Yeah, and uh, this is it. Yeah, this time I didn't make a sign mistake. Hopefully, probably, I don't know. Yeah, this is it. Um, it's as easy as it is. This probably doesn't tell you anything. I mean, it does tell you everything about those cases. And now you have explicit formulas to derive your integrating factor. But you are better off just calculating some examples. And we are going to do this in further videos. I'm going to calculate some solutions to exact differential equations. Then we're going to deal with inexact differential equations. Blah, blah, blah. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and recommend channel if you like and by the features I created. Also, I have a physical mailbox now. Please send me shitty postcards. I want to read weird stuff. Okay, <laughs> it's just so much fun. And yeah, up until next video, have a flammable day. Don't forget to share the video everywhere and activate the bell button, my boys. See ya.